Hello there, happy new year. It is a rainy, cold, dreary day, and what better day than that to try out a bunch of new makeup. I purchased a few of these things right at the end of the year, and I decided I wanted to try them on with you all first time on camera. So I have some new goodies from Natasha Denona, her new eyeshadow palette and her mini cheek palette. I also have the new Charlotte Tilbury face palette. But then, some of you don't believe me, but I do love good drugstore products and I'm always trying new things. So I have the new e.l.f. cream blushes along with the new e.l.f. eyebrow pencils. These say they're waterproof. I'm not sure if there's a difference in the formula between the original and that one. And then I have a bunch of other goodies. I do have a foundation, a couple foundations and concealers that I have tried once or twice, but I'm going to use those today. And we're just gonna have some fun getting ready and talking about some new makeup. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off with eyelid primer. And I did a bunch of cleaning out of drawers and I still have a few products like this eyelid primer. This is the Real Glow Eyelid Primer from Loon and Aster. Haven't used this in a while. So, you know, when you go through things, you go, oh, I forgot about that. Do I like it? So I'm gonna try this one again today and see if indeed it is a keeper or if it needs to find its place in the trash can. I do remember this providing really good coverage, but it just being a drier formula. Wow, okay. That went on smoothly. Hopefully it will hold our eyeshadow in place all day. The two foundations that I've been recently testing out are the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and then the Fenty Beauty. This is called, what is it? The Dew Drop or something like that. Stick Foundation. I think I'm gonna use this one today and save this one for another day. So let's go ahead and apply this. Now, I do love a good stick foundation, but this one is supposed to be super sheer. So we're not gonna have a full coverage look, which is fine. I know it looks like I'm applying a lot, but this is a very smooth glide formula. I'm gonna use the Echo Tools, the Eco Tools, I should say. This is the 360 brush. I've used this foundation a couple times and I do feel like you need a firmer bristle brush to blend this in. Let's just see what kind of coverage we get. It's pretty light coverage for sure. Let's see if we can build a little bit here. You can hear that I sound a little nasally. I think all of those late nights and stress of just trying to get everything done for the holidays, for Christmas, for New Year's, for church, for all the different activities, I think it finally caught up to me and I had actually spent New Year's Day <laughs> not feeling so well, but I'm on the mend, just still have a little stuffiness. All right, let's just see here. All right, not too bad. All right, let's add a little to the forehead. All right, we're gonna leave that for now, and then we might use one or two of our concealers to help give us some more coverage if we feel like we need it later. Let's head to the eyes next. And for Christmas, my best friend gave me this really nice, good quality Catrice eyeshadow palette. This is the Hot Mocha eyeshadow palette. These are so smooth, buttery, creamy, and I love it. I have already used it, so I'm not gonna use this fully in this video, but I am going to pull in this nice cream shade for our eyebrow highlight because our palette that we're using from Natasha Denona does not have a brow bone highlight shade. Now this one does have just a little bit of a satin finish, but that's okay. Now let's go to the Natasha Denona. This is the My Dream Mini Palette. So if you're not familiar, what Natasha Denona likes to do is she likes to release a mini palette and then release a companion mini palette. So the idea is obviously you can just buy the mini palette, but it should be a good companion to the full size palette. So let's just compare, show them side by side. This is a little hard to do. <laughs> okay. So I do think that the colors in here will go along because this, this palette does have a lot of beautiful, colorful duochrome shimmers, but let's use it today all on its own. Let's see how this works. This is the rougher 
zero one max. And let's just start right here with this shade. Oh, very soft. And we're going to just put this through the crease because I have some really fun blush shades to try. I am going to just keep the eyes pretty light, I think, and neutral. Obviously this palette is very cool toned. So we'll see what we end up with. All right, so that is just a hint of color on my skin tone, which I figured it wouldn't show up a whole lot. All right, let's go with the next darkest shade in the palette. Okay, I just swatched all of the colors really quickly. So now we're gonna go in with the shade, which is right here. So very, very, just kind of minimal steps up in tone and color and the shimmers, the one that's super, super kind of light and almost more like a satin finish, that one felt like it was one of her creamed powder formulas. So let's just see what this does here. All right, that's given us some good payoff in the crease, the outer corner. I believe that is the one repeat shade from her full size midi palette. So that is a really nice crease shade, just a general shade that would work for just about everything. So I can see why she brought that in again. It's very pretty. All right, let's go to the lid. We'll try this one again. Like I said, I feel like this is kind of like a cream, one of her cream formulas. Okay, that's pretty. But I feel like on the eyes, oh yeah. Okay, see it's very subtle. No chunky glitter particles. It's kind of like a taupe with a little bit of gold as the light hits. All right, and then let's go in with this shade right here. I'm hoping for big things, some great things. So that's pretty. All right, and we're gonna just tap this kind of on the center going towards the inter inner corner, inner corner. Oh, talking well today. <laughs> By the way, this nail color, isn't it just so pretty? I just painted my nails and my toes this color. I'll leave the color name in the description box down below. I don't have it in front of me, it's a Zoya one. It's so pretty. All right, very nice neutral eye look. Now let's add just a little bit of this deepest shade right here, which is that one. I'm gonna use the Sigma E15 and I'm going to put this just into the roots of my lashes down here. That's given us quite a lot of payoff. And I'm going to just drag this out. And I think we're gonna use this as our liner today. And then let's start from the halfway point and just go out to meet that line. This is a really, really nice formula. Very pigmented, not having to do a lot of layering, which is nice, but very blendable too. All right, we're gonna clean up the outer corner in a moment. Now I'm just pressing that right into the roots of the lashes. There we go. And then I'll clean off that brush really well, and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this shade right here. Just bring that in on the inner corner. All right, we'll clean that up, but I think that will look nice. And then I'm gonna take the rougher number 01 mini and a little tiny touch in that dark shadow, just on the tip of the brush. This is one of the brushes that really needs to be cleaned. I love this brush though. Okay, and I'm just going to just bring that the outer corner ever so slightly and then go back with our blending brush here. Let's clean up under the eyes and we're gonna soften that outer edge a little bit using a little bit of Now Solutions Almond Oil. These rainy days are a little hard when you have a puppy because you have to come up with creative ways to get their energy out since they're not gonna get their outside W-A-L-K. <laughs> Okay, all right, now that we're cleaned up on the outer corner, let's do some concealer. 
Okay, before we do concealer, my lips really need some help. So as I was going through my beauty room, I went through several PR packages and I received one from Florasis. And I'm not gonna show the eyeshadow palette here. I'll do a tutorial with it, but they sent me a couple of other items. This is a really fancy jar and it has a lip mask in it. No scent whatsoever, but I just think it's so, so pretty. And then they also sent over this darling cheek blush and everything is in Chinese. So the only thing that I can actually read on the outer packaging is when they say, you know, cheek blush or something, but isn't that just so pretty? The an embossed rose. We might work this in today. And then I also had received from You Beauty this plasma lip compound in the shade Lady. I used this briefly yesterday, so maybe I won't use this today since I'm trying to do new things, but let's try the Florasis one here. Okay, so I just dipped my little spatula in there. Feels kind of like, uh, like a smooth, well, almost like the Laneige lip mask. Maybe a little thinner than the Laneige, but oh, so much better. My lips are happy now. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling a little like minty tingle on my lips right now. So, <laughs> okay, we'll see how, how long that lasts. Let's add some concealer. So the three concealers I have been testing, two from the drugstore, Maybelline, this is the active wear, 30 hour active wear concealer. And then I have the L'Oreal True Match. This is a new concealer from L'Oreal. And then I've been trying out, I've tried a couple times the Derma Blend. This is the Cover Care. So all of these have been recommended by various YouTubers kind of at the end of the year. So I'm like, you know what? I need to give those a try. I feel like based on the coverage level of this foundation, I need to choose one of these two. So let's try the Maybelline Super Stay under the eyes. But you know what? I do need a color corrector because this is, we've, we've got some serious darkness here. <laughs> I'm going to use the LA Girl. This is the Pro Conceal Peach Corrector. Now let's go in with this, and I have the shade number 18. This was just a wild stab in the dark when I ordered it online. It seems to be pretty good. Now this is a very thin formula. It has a very thin doe foot applicator, so I'm not really getting a ton of product, which is a good thing. You can control the amount but I know it looks like I've just swiped on a ton and really all I've done is smoothed on a very thin layer. Pretty close match to the foundation itself. And then let's use the Sephora 47 brush. I'm just going to tap that in. Now I have used this a few times and I do love how thin, how lightweight it feels and it seems to give good coverage. I just am struggling a little bit on the wear time. So I'll just test that out again. But initially, I mean, I feel like it gives good coverage. I would say a good medium. Now the L'Oreal True Match, I have the shade N3. I like to do a little bit of a neutral on my concealer under the eyes. Let's just use a little bit of this. See, I think it's a little bit lighter than that one. Let's put a little bit here and here. And we'll blend those in. So I'll continue using the Derma Blend and I'll fill you in later on that. Okay, I totally forgot I got some free gifts with purchase from e.l.f. I received the Power Grip Primer, should have tried that today, and then also the Pure Skin Moisturizer with Oat Milk, Ceramides, and Niacinamide. Hmm, that will be a really good one to test. Love all of those ingredients. And then with my Sephora order, I also received this Milk Makeup Powder. I might try this. This is their blurring powder. What is this? The Pore Eclipse Matte Translucent Setting Powder. I'll give that a try today, as long as I remember. <laughs> Pulled it out of the box, so I won't forget. Okay, let's go to the cheeks next. And I purchased three of the e.l.f. Camo Liquid Blushes. Let me get these out of the box here. 
You're getting 0.13 fluid ounces. And this first shade is coming in hot pink. Has a very kind of rounded, large doe foot applicator. I've seen one review on these and they do seem pretty pigmented. Okay, so it says that this is build a lasting finish with this super pigmented liquid blush. The lightweight formula blends out to a soft dewy finish that's as flattering as elf. Okay, it says we're supposed to dot two, one to two dots on the cheeks and blend out with their brush. All right, I'm just going to see, ooh, that's a full on pigment. Of course, I'm not, I wouldn't leave it like that on the cheeks, but let's just swatch each of these. Then we'll decide which one we wanna use. This next one is Dusty Rose. And the last one is Bronze Bombshell. Do take a little muscle power to open the first time. Just FYI. Whoa, okay, that is definitely bronzy, okay. There you go, there's the three colors. I think for today, I'm gonna try a blend of these two, and then we might try a little bit of the bronzer. I don't know, these are really pigmented. They remind me a bit of the Rare Beauty blushes that are really pigmented. Okay, so we're gonna start with blush, no contour to start, because I really want you to see these blush colors kind of in their true form. So I'm gonna start off first with the one that is Dusty Rose. I'm going to use the rougher number 04 brush. Just work that into the back of my hand and into the brush. And then let's apply a little bit to the top of the cheeks. Oh, that's actually very pretty and quite a lot more pigment that shows up than I would have expected. But I am glad that I'm doing this on the back of my hand. That's always how I recommend doing especially liquid blushes. Okay, that's very nice. All right, do we dare? <laughs> Let's dare, Let's add just a little bit, oh boy, okay, of this coming in hot pink. Ooh, they do seem to kind of set down, but then you can continue blending them, so. Yes, it's very, very pigmented. So I think these will work for all skin tones. Holy smokes, that's a lot of pigment there. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush and go back with this foundation brush from Real Techniques. I still have a little bit. I just use this to blend out my foundation there at the end. There we go. I think I'm gonna leave it there and I'll save the bronzer for another day because I have a powder product that I wanna try out from Charlotte Tilbury. We're gonna go the opposite end of the price range here. <laughs> but that's what we do on my channel. I like to try it all. And I know some of you <laughs> gave me a little grief over my drugstore best in drugstore products. Here's my philosophy. Whether you're spending $5 at the drugstore or $75 on a high-end product, it's a still a waste of money if that is not a good product. So I don't want you wasting even $5 if it's not really worth that $5, okay? That's just my philosophy. Okay, let's do some powder. All right, I'm gonna try this Milk Makeup Powder. Okay, the texture of that Milk Powder is very nice. It's it feels in between a finishing and a setting powder, but it says it's a setting powder, so we're gonna try it that way. Now to apply it, I'm going to use one of these awesome triangular sponges that we're seeing everywhere. These are from the brand B Key, which makes one of my favorite makeup sponges that I use to apply liquid foundation. They're, they sell on Amazon. They sent me a very nice package, and these are actually slightly thicker than some of the other ones I've gotten on Amazon. See how, how much thicker they are? They're a little more cushy, really like them. So let's use a nice clean one with this new powder. I don't know if I wanna set my under eyes with this, but let's start right here in the center of the face. Let's just see. I'm gonna set half of my face and we'll compare. Okay, I didn't set the under eyes, but in comparison to this side to this side, obviously a little or a lot less glow. I still see a little bit of some texture here. 
from that foundation. But let's go ahead and set the other side. All right, I'm going to attempt to use this under the eyes. Why not, right? It's a nice lightweight formula. I did already have some creases with that concealer and I don't know, in person, I'm still seeing a lot of darkness there, but <laughs> we're gonna just go with it. All right, I'm gonna use the Ruffer number 19 brush. Looking a little dry. We're just gonna move on because I need a little shaping to the face and I am really excited. Now we're heading to the opposite end of the budget spectrum and this is the new Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of our glow face palettes and I have the other two from the previous two years. So I always like to buy these and test them out for you. And this is the light one. Oh my goodness. It just looks so beautiful. And these two, actually even these three, they all seem to have a little bit of a duochrome shift. Let's use a little bit of this. I'm going to use the rougher number 24 brush and let's just see. What I found with these is that stiff formula is nice because you can actually swirl your brush and you don't get any pick, kick up whatsoever. So you're not wasting product which if you've spent the money on this palette, you surely do not want to have half of it flying out into the air, right? At least I don't. <laughs> so let's see, this is a little warm. I'll pull out the other two palettes so you can see the comparison in a moment, but it is giving a nice, just little bit of definition. Now I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush. This is the 103 from BK Beauty. And let's use that now more as like a bronzer. Oh yeah, getting a lot more color there. So I feel like this for me is going to be more of a bronzer, not so much contour, but I just wanted to try it since, you know, I don't have a, a new contour. Well, I do, the Westman Atelier, but I didn't want to use that today. All right, that's nice. Okay, so I like it as a bronzer, not so much as a contour shade. And before we go in with the highlighter there, we have another blush cheek product, and this is the Natasha Denona My Dream Mini Cheek Palette. I think this is so cute. It is mini. When they say mini, it's mini, but thankfully it's at a greatly reduced price. Okay, I haven't even swatched these yet. All right, so very, very neutral, light, and then that highlighter is really pretty. We have a lot of highlighters to use today. <laughs> okay, let's go in. I'm just gonna use my E4 from Morphe and let's just tap. I'm just tapping in both of those colors. Okay, not, you know, not that our cheeks really need any more color, but I think on a rainy, dreary day for some reason, I think that I need more color, right? All right, that's pretty. It's, um, as long as I, I'm just tapping my brush in so it's not kicking up powder. Let's dip a little bit into this highlighter. Just wanna see. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty powerful. That's pretty. I do actually have somewhere to go today, but it's okay. We're just going to go with whatever we end up with. All right, let's go back to this Charlotte Tilbury palette. And I'm going to go in now with this shade. Well, let's do a little bit of that in the inner corner. It's going to be a little hard to try all of these shades on our cheeks today at once. At least get an idea of the glow factor. That's pretty. Oh, why not? Let's, let's try a little bit of this one. Just a little lower. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, at this point, <laughs> I'm just adding glow upon glow upon glow. Now we need some eyebrows. This is what I get for not going to the bottom of my box first. I had actually ordered the e.l.f. camo color corrector. Darn, okay, future video. All right, I ordered two of their new lip liners. These are $2. 
And then I ordered three colors in the eyebrow pencil. This is the Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I think these are now $4. These started off, I think, at $2 way back when. But I ordered three colors because I ordered a gray color because I get so many questions from people with gray hair. What color pencil can I use? And until now, I don't know of any drugstore brand that has carried a gray pencil. So I'm so happy to see that. And I do work on friends from church and in my neighborhood that have more gray tones in their hair. So this will be nice to have in my kit. I'll swatch that for you. And I'm gonna have to open these up to see what the other colors are that I ordered because Apparently on the outer packaging, it's not apparent. Okay, here we go. Blonde, gray, taupe. And th again, this is supposed to be a waterproof formula. So I'll have to test that out for you. I think I would like to start off, let's start off with the blonde and just see what kind of definition we get from that. And I feel like they beefed up the packaging a little bit because before, this used to be so loose that as you were applying it, it would roll back down into the product or into the barrel. So let's see if this kind of hangs with us here. Formula goes on pretty easily, but it is slightly waxier than I remember the other formula being. Let's try the taupe color right here in my arch. I feel like I need a little more color, but it does glide on like real quickly and it is building nicely. Sometimes if it's too waxy, it won't build properly, but this one seems to be building nicely. That went on pretty easily. Again, I do feel like it's a little waxy, but maybe that helps with the waterproof aspect of it because most waxes are more waterproof or at least water resistant. All right, let's add some clear brow gel. I don't have a new brow gel, so I'm just gonna use my longtime favorite, the ABH clear brow gel. I do actually feel like the brows are kind of a little bit stiff after that pencil. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but I just, I mean, my face feels very glowy right here. I haven't added any highlighter in this area. We'll leave the cheeks be what they are. Actually, I think the cheeks look beautiful, but I am just not loving the foundation, especially with that powder. And I feel like sometimes when our coverage, like the coverage as a whole, isn't what I want it to be, it throws off the whole makeup look. We'll keep going. We'll persevere to the end. So in fact, I bought this last year, got too light of a color, long story short. I really have not given this a full test because I bought it right before summer and it was too light. So I'm gonna try this. This is the Makeup Forever HD Matte Skin Velvet, HD Skin Matte Velvet. <laughs> I really struggled. I think I returned this two or three times. After the third time, I waited too long to get my proper color. This is N. One four, so that would be neutral. The yellows were way too yellow PG, but I think this might work. So I've seen a lot of people use this as a setting powder to add just a little more coverage. So why not? I'm not in love with how the skin's looking right now. So let's just do half the face with this and see what happens. I'm not gonna go over the entire cheek area, just more center of the face. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, that improved things quite a lot. And I think right now this is a pretty good shade for me. So this is meant to be actually a powder foundation all on its own, or you can use it as kind of a little added coverage as a setting powder. Yeah. Do you see how much <laughs> glow? All right, let's just finish this side too. All right, let's curl the lashes because I do actually have a new <laughs> mascara to try. It is also from e.l.f. and this is the Lash Extender Mascara. It is supposed to be a tubing mascara. And of course the visual makes it look like we're gonna have amazing looking lashes. It's Instant Dramatic Lash Length 
length and definition. Now I am normally a volumizing lengthening kind of girl. Those are my priorities with regard to mascara, but we're gonna give this a try. Like lash extensions, this dramatically lengthening mascara uses tubing technology to take your lashes to the next level. The long lasting buildable formula wraps lashes in lightweight tubes that extend beyond your natural length clump flake and smudge resistant infused with 5% jojoba seed oil to nourish the lashes. Hey, if we can't get our jojoba seed oil in our hairspray, at least we can still get it in our mascara. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have some Aussie instant freeze hairspray drama continuing. So stay tuned. All right, let's just see. All right, one time through the lashes. That's pretty good. And a tubing mascara, as it said, what that does is it actually puts a tube over each lash. And instead of when it gets wet or you cry, you know, normal mascara just turns right to liquid and melts right off. A tubing mascara does not do that. It's not waterproof, but it holds on better and usually holds up better to watery eyes or like for me, I usually love a tubing mascara on the lower lashes because I have a lot of issues with smudging and a tubing mascara generally does not smudge on me. Okay, I like it on the lower lashes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to build the volume that I typically love the upper lashes but we'll try it says it's buildable so let's see okay so roughly at least three coats of mascara and i wanted to just push it to its limits to see if we started getting you know spidery looking lashes and i really don't think we do i was trying to also build the volume a little bit I don't really feel like the volume the volume builds, but I do feel like the length builds with each coat. But I would recommend do the building before it dries completely because I tried to go back on this one once it was a little more dry and it was a little harder to build. But all in all, it's nice. And as long as it wears well, this will definitely be something that I at least probably plan to wear on the lower lashes because I love a tubing mascara down there. Okay, we have several more lip products to try out here. So before I go do my hair and we choose our final lip combination, I wanna go in and try this e.l.f. Glow Reviver Lip Oil. This is one of those really hot products and I'm normally not a lip oil fan in general, but we're gonna give this a try. See what all the hubaloo is about. This is the shade Red Delicious, and I got this because I knew it would be super sheer. I thought if I wanted any color, I would need to go with something real bright. So, ooh. This does have a nice texture, a little thicker than your typical lip oil. And it did give a little hint of color. So this is something for me personally, I'll probably keep by the television or in the drawer when I get everything ready to go walk Gracie. I love to throw on just a glossy balm or gloss or something. So I could see myself using this. It's so sheer, it's really not gonna give you much color, but it does feel nice and hydrating. Give lips an addictive, revitalizing glow and glossy finish with this apricot oil infused nourishing oil. The oversized ultra plush applicator applies a sheer flush of color that looks and feels luxe. So apricot seed oil, really good for your lips. The BK Beauty lipsticks actually contain that. Okay, while we're letting that just sit and marinate on the lips, I'm gonna swatch these two lip liners from e.l.f. Okay, this drives me nuts when e.l.f. does this. They rarely put the actual color name on the product itself. So if you go to repurchase a color you love, you're out of luck unless you can pull up your order or figure out which one. So the outer packaging does tell us the names. So this one is Baddest Beige. And ooh, that is a much smoother glide than I was anticipating. These old pencils from e.l.f., if you remember the dollar ones, those used to be so stiff. These are not, they are a wood pencil, but I don't mind that at all. 
And then that is pinky swear. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I really like those. All right, I'm gonna go do my hair. I'll come back and we will apply our final lip products. Okay, hair is done. And before I wipe off the lip oil, I just wanted to hop on here. The lips obviously lost pretty much all the gloss. There's still hydration there. So it feels like I'm still wearing kind of a lip balm, but that's why I don't feel like lip oils are something that I tend to carry in my purse to, you know, wear about through the day, but a good hydrating product. Between that and the Floresis lip balm, my lips feel better. I have a whining puppy. She really wants to get outside. <laughs> it's really hard. She's she went outside out back, but she just she wants to go on an adventure. So we're gonna go for a ride to PetSmart. Yeah, you want to go for a ride in a little bit? Okay, I'm gonna go around the edge with my Max Half Doker paint pot here. Let's see how well I can finish this video <laughs> with one hand and a puppy on my lap. Oh goodness. Okay, the lip color I want to use today is a new one of the Tarte Maracuja Lip Plumps. This is in the shade Berry Shimmer. Doesn't that just look so pretty? So I feel like the Pinky Swear lip liner is the best option to pair with this. So that's going to be the one we try on today. What do you think? You think so too? Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's go in with this color. Oh, that's really pretty. I have the rose one. This definitely has a little more color. Mm. A little brighter, actually, for being berry. I feel like this one is, yes, a brighter tone. But I think that <laughs> is what I really needed to bring the look together. Very quickly, I just want to kind of sum up my thoughts on the things that I tried today. So I feel like these blushes are really nice. I will have to wear them again separately without a powder blush on top to make sure that they hold their color through the day. But so far on initial application, really nice formulation, good pigmentation. And I love the lip product. The lip liners seem to perform very well. We'll see if they hold this glossy lip in place and prevent feathering of the lip liner. I think the eyebrow pencils, as long as they stay in place all day, these are a good new kind of upgrade of their original formula. And again, the mascara, I'll let you know. I'll put a note in the description box down below how this wore. As far as the foundation goes, I just, every time I wear this, I feel like this is what I end up with. No matter what powder I put on top, I feel like I just see a lot of texture. And it's probably because this is more of a glowy pride product and sheerer coverage. I don't mind sheerer coverage, but there's something about the combination of the two. For the price, Wet n Wild makes a really great stick foundation. And so, I'll continue using this because I bought it with rewards points from Ulta, so I gotta keep it. But I, I'm a little disappointed uh, compared to the rave reviews I've heard on it. It's not my favorite. And as far as this eyeshadow palette goes, you might be surprised to hear this, but I, I'm not in love with this color combination. I mean, it's fine. It's pretty on the eyes, but Right now, I'm just dying to add just a slight little bit of some rosy warmth through the crease, which I would find in the I Need a Nude palette. And I feel like if you want just that hint of coolness, this is the palette for you. I love this palette. I think what this palette does for me that this one doesn't is it gives that just hint of some warmth in the crease. You still have the option of coolness, but I don't know. I just, this one, this one was a hit for me from the beginning. And this one is fine. The quality is really good. If these are your kinds of tones and you don't want to do the I need a nude palette, you just want a mini cool palette, this might be up your alley, but I don't know. I'll continue using it, but I feel like I'm going to continue to want to bring in something else. It's fine. It's a great neutral. But all in all, it's not my favorite from Natasha Denona. And finally, let's talk about this. All right, the packaging, 
we don't even need to discuss. It's gorgeous as normal. The formulation of these powders is beautiful. I think what I'm disappointed in in this color scheme versus the first one she did like this, this was the Love Palette, this one. What I think was better about this is we had a contour. We had this actual contour shade and a deeper shade. Both of these were more of a matte formulation. And then we had the glowy products up here. I feel like this is beautiful, but I'm just dying for that little more coolness for an actual contour. And then I could use this kind of more universally. But this is still nice, really good formulation. And I was reading on the box, you can actually use these on your eyes as well. A lot of times they don't give that caveat because there's ingredients in blushes and bronzers that aren't necessarily good for your eyes. But this as an eyeshadow and a face palette, I think does make it a little more budget friendly, but it is a pretty spendy palette. It's beautiful, but I don't know that it's something you must have. This little mini, if you've wanted to try some of her cheek products in a mini size, a more budget friendly option, this is a nice way to do that. I think this is cute. It's nice, it'd be great for travel. I'll continue to use this. Now, as far as the other products that I forgot I had purchased or had gotten for free, this and the e.l.f. skincare and the primer, continue to look for more videos like this. I hope that you enjoy this. Just more casual, sit down, let's try things together, see what works, see what we like. And as always, I will link and list everything in the description box down below this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.